to thank uh, Rich and Kristen LaPierre. Uh, sounds by Rich. I guess they have a physical location now right next to Cage by Amanda. They're providing this audio system to us at no cost. They're just being great members of our community and we really, really appreciate it. As always, I'd like to thank the selectmen, the finance committee, for all the hard work that they did on this year's budget. I'm going to be reappointing uh, Theodore Quag and Christian Lamoureux to do three-year terms on the finance committee. Mark Stady will be stepping down at the end of his term, so I'm looking for a replacement. If you know anybody who wants to be on the finance committee, the only requirements are that you are a registered voter and that you do not serve on any other town committee that gets money in the budget. Uh, we thank Mark for his service. This has been a difficult year for our country and for our community. The path forward requires civic engagement, keeping an open mind, and most of all, being kind to one another. We're blessed to have the opportunity to practice all of those things as we come together tonight to make decisions about what kind of a town we want Barry to be. The town meeting is arguably this country's oldest democratic institution, but it's entirely possible that this is Barry's first ever annual town meeting, al fresco. In the interest of avoiding sharing microphones, tonight the chairman of the board of selectmen will be making all the main motions. If you've been to town meetings before, usually we have department heads do that. We're going to skip that uh, tradition tonight. Um, if you have a question or a comment, I have runners with microphones. And the way this is going to work is, they'll ask you your name and what street you live on. You'll tell them, and they will repeat that into their microphone. I don't want you speaking into the microphone. Only my runners are going to speak into the microphones. That'll save us a lot of microphone cleaning. Uh, if you have a question, you can ask them and they'll repeat your question into the microphone. If you feel compelled to give your head so that hopefully we'll be able to hear you, which assures me he can make that work. Meeting two nights ago. Uh, right here. In the rain, Ellen moved that we adjourn to this place and this evening. So the fact we got rained on is entirely her fault. I seconded and the vote was unanimous. I would like to draw your attention to the three moderators, moderators motion in page 27 of the finance committee booklet, this bright blue. Give you all a second to find page 27. If you haven't had a chance to read this book, it's fascinating. Um, our outgoing uh, town administrator, uh, Heather Monroe, prepared a very comprehensive and clear explanation of how we got to the budget that we're voting on tonight. It's, <laughs> it's um, so on page 27, we have three moderators' motions. They're just procedural. Uh, I ask for unanimous consent. And hearing no objections, those motions carry. In the interest of me keeping the meeting as short as possible, we're going to be using a consent agenda tonight. This is a new, a new thing for Barry, but it's a common parliamentary procedure used in town meetings. It will let us identify in advance a whole bunch of articles that would not normally get any debate. We'll go through each of those after I get the motion. I'll read them. And if there's any of those that you think does need debate, that you have a question about, you call out hold. And you hold up this card, which I'm declaring is chartreuse. As the moderator, I get to do that. So you'll hold out your card, you'll say hold, 
we'll figure out why you wanted to hold, and if you need to have a debate on that one, we'll pull that one out of the consent agenda. At the end of that process, we're going to have a whole bunch of articles that we can vote on all at once with one yay or nay. Any questions about that? Excellent. Uh, I will now entertain a motion from the selectmen that reconsiders articles 1 and 2, 4 through 12, 16, 17, 19, and 20 in a consent agenda. One of you needs to say, so moved. So moved. Do I have a second? second. I don't have All in favor of moving ahead with the consent agenda? Aye. Oh, we need that card. Yeah. All opposed to using a consent agenda? The motion carries. All right. So I'm going to go through these. Bear with me. So again, I'm going to read what the motion is, and because of the uh, moderator's motions that we read earlier, I don't have to read the, the specific warrant language. So I'm going to read what the motion is, and then if you think that that doesn't need any debate, you just stay quiet, but if you think it's something we need to talk about, you say hold. I move that the town appropriate the sum of $563,064 for the Water Enterprise Fund to be funded from the following sources. Water receipts, $536,622. Retained earnings, $26,442. To be expended as follows. Salaries, $171,268. Commissioner stipends, $900. Expenses, $221,000. Water replacement, $5,000. Water upgrade, $70,000. Indirect costs, $94,896. Article 2, I move that the town appropriate the sum of $745,467 for the Sewer Enterprise Fund to be funded from the following resources, $685,867 from sewer receipts, $59,600 from retained earnings to be expended as follows, $227,040 from salaries, $900 for commissioner stipends, $391,500 for expenses, $126,027 for indirect costs for total of $745,467. We're not doing Article 3, we're going ahead to 4. I move the town vote to transfer from ambulance receipts reserved the sum of $475,000 to fund the FY21 omnibus budget for the fiscal year beginning 21, uh, July 1st, 2020. Article 5, I move the town vote to fix salaries and compensation of all elected officials of the town for the fiscal year 2021 for the period of July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2021, and further to raise and appropriate monies as identified in the town's omnibus budget. I'm not going to read every line of the town's omnibus budget. If there's anything in there that you think we need to talk about, you'd call a hold right now. Article 6, I move the town to vote to raise and appropriate monies as identified in the town's omnibus budget relative to education as follows. The Quabbin assessment, $5,679,580. The Monty Tech assessment of $428,358. And the QRSD debt service of $51,020 for a total of $6,158,958. Article 7, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $15,725 for costs associated with the assessor's recertification of properties as follows. Cyclical reinspection for $6,000, recertification reevaluation for $7,500, interim value adjustment for $725, and a special appraisal of $1,500. Article 8, 
I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $25,000 from the PEG Access and Cable Related Fund to operate the public educational and governmental PEG Access and Cable Related Fund for the fiscal year 2021. Article 9. I move the town vote to establish spending limits for revolving accounts established pursuant to MGL Chapter 24, Section 53E and a half, and the town's bylaw Chapter 48, Section 1 for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020, as followed. Um, I will give you a moment to look through those. I'm not going to read them. Any holds? Article 10. I move the town to vote to transfer the sum of $5,149 from FY19 free cash to the fiscal year 2020 snow removal OTPT account. And then there's an account number. Oh, I have a hold. Do you have a, is that a hold, Sam? Yes. So, yeah, so the motion was to transfer the sum of $5,149 from free cash. The warrant article, which is right above the motion, included the option of borrowing in case when they we got here tonight, there wasn't enough free cash, they could have borrowed, but they didn't make that motion. So this is not a borrowing motion, this is simply a, uh, a moving money from free cash. You'll notice that on most of these. Article 11, the snow removal expense account, I move the town to vote to transfer the sum of $30,638.63 from FY19 free cash to the fiscal year 2020 snow removal expense account. There's an account number there. Article 12, I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $1,000 from FY19 free cash to Watusha Greenways Trail Fund. And now we're skipping ahead. I didn't deal with any of the capital items in the consent agenda. So while you skip ahead, I'm gonna take a little drink of water. You're ruining my shit here. All right, 16. I move the, found, the town vote to allow the Board of Assessors to appoint one of its members to a paid part-time position under their supervision as allowed by MGL Chapter 268A, Section 21A. Seventeen, the Chapter 90 grant. I move the town to vote to accept any and all state highway assistance funds authorized by the state legislature and approved by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division under the so-called Chapter 90 Highway Assistance Program to be expended for the maintenance, repair, and construction of town roads in anticipation of reimbursement of the direction of the board of selectmen for the work on roads located in the state aid primary system is approved by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division to further authorize the treasurer collector with the approval of board of selectmen to borrow money from time to time during the fiscal year 21 2021 up to the reimbursable amount for the period from July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021 in anticipation of reimbursement of said highway assistance in conformity with the provisions of the Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 6A. Jumping ahead again to 19. I move the town vote to pass over Pascal article to pass over Article 19 to choose all other town officers, agents, and committees not elected by ballot or appointed, having already been acted upon. And Article 20, I move the town accept the written reports of the town departments for the calendar year, year 2019. So that's the consent agenda. Are there any questions 
about what we're about to do. If we vote yes on this, we pass all those motions. If we vote no, we reject all those motions. All right? The way we're voting tonight is you're going to hold up your card. When I call for yeses, you hold up your card. When I call for noes, you hold up your card. All right? I'm going to try and eyeball it. If I can't eyeball it, I have tellers. Okay? All those in favor, hold up your cards. You can put your cards down. All those opposed, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. At the request of the Finance Committee, I will entertain a motion that we address Article 3 at the end of the meeting after Article 21. Uh, this is because this is free cash, and until the end of the meeting, we don't know how much free cash we still have left. Can I get that motion? Just to move Article 3 to the end of the meeting? So moved. Can I get a second? All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries. We are now on Article 13. So if I'm jumping around, I'll let you know when I find it so I can help you find it. Page 38. Article 13 is the capital request of the police cruiser. I will entertain a motion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move the town go to transfer from FY19 free cash the sum of $45,000 to pay for a new police cruiser. Do I get a second? I have a second. Is there any discussion on this motion? Yes, sir. Uh, so, I need, my runner is going to come over, he's going to ask your name and what street you live on, and if you have a question or comment. Hang on. Neil Anders, West Street. If you have a question, Neil, uh, you can tell him the question. So I have really deep concern for what's going on in the world around us. And all of the spending, every issue, uh, I think should be questioned incredibly deeply uh, to address the potentials that are facing this community and, and the world. Uh, we don't really know what the expenses are going to be coming up. And uh, my want would be that uh, any spending be put on hold across the board, not restricted to this article, but any borrowing, any spending at all, I would gravely consider voting against if I were you. Thank you. Are there any other? Mr. Lipson. Oh, wait. wait, I need my runner. Testing. All right. Um. Sam Lidson, West Street, Ferry Mass. I would like to ask that somebody check that out for what some of our senior people can do. Sam would like to request that we turn off the AC unit on top of the building so that senior people can hear. Yeah, Sam, it's, it's the AC on top of the building. I don't think we can do that. Okay. No Any other uh, issues on this article? Sidley? Sam has another question.
I'm Point it down, I think. Like that. I'm somewhat in agreement with what Neil Andrews said. Uh, not specifically about every article, about every spending, but in regards to the, the addition of an automobile, is that I've, I've always believed that technology has increased to such a level that cars last a lot longer than they have been in the past. And maybe considering our fiscal difficulties in this world, we should maybe rethink uh, about uh, that direction. Thank you. Any other comments or questions about Article 13? Yes. We have Bruce Zebel from Williamsville Road. Point it. So we have a question. He's curious <laughs> if the cruiser needs to be replaced, and he says if it does, that's fine. But if it doesn't need to be, then why are we doing it? Okay, I'll endeavor to get an answer to that question. Can you put your mask on, please? The police chief is going to help us with that. While we're waiting for the chief, I just note that these crews, um, when their officer's out, it's probably on the road for 16 hours a day driving. Um, your average homeowner's vehicle may see three or four hours a day, if that much, and it lasts you five to 10 years. But you imagine driving that 16 hours a day, every day. And we, we need to replace these on a, a five-year basis. Uh, Chief, if there's something you'd like read, I'm happy to read it. If that satisfies your question, we'll move on. If not, the Chief will further explain. At 142. Great. Okay. Um, he just shared that the current mileage on the car that they'll be replacing is 142,206 miles, and they have spent $10,338 in maintenance since 2017. Okay. Any other questions? Yep, I have another one. We have Arthur Raich from Dana Road. He has a comment. Knowing the process that we have to go through for articles in town, having served on the finance committee in the past, I know how hard they work to put these articles together. My feeling is that the chief of the finance committee feel that they need the cruiser. We need to support our police. We need to give them the cruiser, period. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on Article 13? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. Lower your cards. All those opposed to the motion? The motion carries. Article 14, I'll entertain a motion about the purchase and equipment of a new ambulance. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move the town to vote to transfer the sum of $285,000 from fiscal year 19 free cash to purchase and equip a new ambulance. Do I have a second? I have a second and a motion. Are there any questions or comments regarding Article 14? There is one. Maureen Marshall Pleasant Street. If 
she would like to know how much money is in free cash. Six hundred and forty some odd thousand. Um, I'll have to get the numbers in our booklet. It's in the booklet in the beginning. It's it's over six hundred thousand. Yes, the balance six hundred thirty four seven hundred seventy four dollars. See, and on page twenty seven. FY19 free cash, 634774. On page 27. Yeah. Do we have another question? We have Richard Denardi. He lives on Loring Road. He's wondering how many ambulances the town currently has, and is this an addition or a replacement? The town currently has and runs two ambulances, and this is to replace the one that's spending more time in the shop than on the road. Any other questions? I have one over here. Ms. Max is taking the question. We have Dave St. Germain, Old Stage Road. I'd just like to clarify if these capital requests were planned, I thought they were planned years ago, uh, like so that on a schedule we're gonna replace the ambulance in this year, we're gonna replace the car in this year, or is this something that came up this year that we're responding to? Can I get an answer from the selectman on that? This should be part of our five-year capital plan. Pardon me? It is, it is in the plan. It is in the five-year capital plan. This is also a vehicle that does a lot of miles, uh, many calls. We fund uh, both ambulances because what Chief Regalsi has been trying to do is get what's called double calls, and very often we have two simultaneous calls. And if we don't have this ambulance in service, it's a substantial loss in revenues um, for the ambulance. Any other questions on Article 14? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. You can lower your cards. All those opposed to the motion, please raise your cards. The motion carries unanimously. I'll entertain a motion on Article 15, a capital request for the Ruggles Lane parking lot. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move the town to vote to transfer the sum of $50,000 from FY19 free cash to pay for parking lot repairs at the Ruggles Lane School. Do I have a second? I have a second and a motion. Is there any discussion of this article? Seeing none, we can go directly to a vote. All those in favor of Article 15, please raise your cards. You can lower your cards. All those opposed, the motion carries. Article 18. This is a borrowing article, so it's going to require a two-thirds uh, vote to pass. Can I uh, get someone to read a motion for Article 18? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move the town to vote to authorize the treasurer or collector with the approval of the Board of Selectmen to borrow money from time to time in anticipation of revenue for the 12-month period beginning July 1st, 2020 in accordance with the provision of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 4, and to issue a note or notes as may be given for a period of less than one year in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 17, and to authorize the treasurer collector to enter into a compensating balance agreement or agreements for fiscal year 2021 pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53F. Do I have a second? 
I have a motion and a second on Article 18. Is there any discussion of this motion? I do have discussion from Mr. Anders, who's already introduced himself, so he can cut straight to the question. Yeah, I would reiterate, is it cutting out? Yeah, I would reiterate the uh, cautionary that we're, we're spending, we're borrowing. I don't think this is a really good plan, and I think we're going to be paying for this later and wishing we had not done this. That's all I have to say. Are there any other comments on Article 18? Mr. Lipson has a comment. Back. It doesn't matter. I saw Mr. Lipson first. We're going to Mr. Lipson. Mr. Lipson. I'll be back soon. I see you. From this motion, we are giving carte blanche to do any borrowing. And I don't know whether we should be giving, we should giving that, those, those light thinking uh, directions about borrowing money. Considering the times that we're living in, we need to have it, we, we, we need to borrow in order to survive and live and thrive, but it seems the way this is written, it's too lax. The motion, just so everyone's clear, the motion that's in front of us is to borrow money from time to time in anticipation of revenue. So this is borrowing ahead of the checks coming in for taxes. Does somebody from Selectmen or Finance want to add to that explanation? It, it just ensures an even cash flow so we can pay our bills as they come in. Matt, did you have further clarification? Or? I wanted to clarify that it, it does not allow us to exceed the budget you already approved under the consent. We can only borrow to maintain our tax flow, so that if we don't have money in the bank right now, we could borrow until the bank is reimbursed by the state for other purposes. So this is not increasing the money we can spend, just making sure we can borrow if we have to, to keep paying our bills until the end of the year. There is a question in the back. We have Ann Tuttle of Wawinet Road. When we're done passing all of these articles where the money is coming out of free cash, how much free cash will we have left? That's Article 3. So we'll get the final accounting of that number at the end. Um, you, we already went over on page 27 is where free cash started. A bunch of these articles are drawing that down. There will be an article at the end, which is Article 3, where that final number will be computed. In fact, we'll have to have a little break for them to figure that out. Does that answer your question? Any other questions or discussion on Article 18? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of Article 18, please raise your yellow cards. Oh, chartreuse. You can lower your cards. All those opposed to Article 18, please raise your cards. Conveniently, it's a net unanimous. That number is on target to be about 160,000 of free cash still in the end. I believe that takes us to Article 21, because we already dealt with a couple of these others in the consent agenda. So I'll entertain a motion on Article 21 about cable access. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move the town vote to transfer from FY19 free cash 
the sum of $100,000 to a new account for cable upgrade and expansion in the town of Barrie. Do I have a second? That's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion of Article 21? Um, we're going to start in the back. So, Max, can you head back there? Uh, just keep your card up. You know who I'm pointing at. We have Deborah Culver, Jewett Road. So I just wanted to say, as we were talking about the um, uncertainty of certain things going on in our world right now, with education being up in the air and having remote learning, as a teacher, a mom of two college students, and a husband who has to work from home for um, the Human Service Agency, we do not have Wi-Fi or cable on our street. We have to travel to our in-laws' house, thus putting them um, susceptible to anything that we are carrying so that we can use their Wi-Fi so that I can teach my classes, my kids can do their classes, and my husband can work. So I just want people to think about that, that we are unable to get cable or Wi-Fi on our street. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? In the pink shirt? Says who's coming up behind you. We have Robin Donati from Lauren Road. I'm hard of hearing and I'm losing my hearing, and I live on Lauren Road because of our lack of broadband access. The devices that I can use to to, um, to be able to hear my accessibility devices. If I use those, then we can't use the internet or we can't watch TV. I'm also a healthcare worker and I work in mental health. I contact and I was able to work from home some, but the limited cable access makes it impossible for me to conduct a meeting uh, for for clients. Um, the cable companies refuse to come to our road to service, to even do um, surveys. It takes an average of six months longer for a house without cable to sell. And they sell for at least $20,000 less. That could be increased tax revenue for the town where our houses be able to have hookups. Sam, did you still have a question? Is that this this one hundred thousand dollars that you've allocated seems kind of kind of a generic number, and I know what things cost nowadays, and these numbers came from years ago. Are we going to get ourselves in a jam where we've allocated a hundred? We go out to bid, and we find out we need more, and they won't start the project. And it appears to me that this project needs to have been done yesterday. And I didn't know what we've anticipated in that direction. Okay, before we go, thank you, Sam. Before we go back to questions, I'd like to give the selectmen an opportunity to sort of explain their rationale behind this. Certainly, thank you. We've been looking into uh, cable service and trying to expand and cover the town for several years. Um, our discussions on the board in attempts to have conversations with the service companies fall on dead ears because we have nothing, no skin in the game. We're not willing to put anything up for it. The cost is far in excess of $100,000. It's more in the vicinity of six or $700,000. We need to start somewhere. We need the town to invest and show the companies that we're serious about it. We also want to apply for grants. I'm hoping that possibly COVID funds might be available for this because of the need for internet for people at home and schooling. But we have to put our step forward someplace and we have to invest some money. So there, this isn't allocated to go anywhere, but it needs to be available so we can tell the companies we deal with, we put $100,000 in, what can you do with us? 
how can we work with it? How can we get a grant and fund it? But we need to be invested as a community before anyone else takes us seriously for grants or the cable company for a cost sharing or anything. Thank you. Do I still have questions in the back? I, Mr. Dumanowski? Next, coming over to you. We have Paul Dumanowski, Murphy Road. He wants to know what percentage of the town does not have internet coverage. I don't know if we have an exact number of people that don't have internet. There are six basic roads in town that don't, and I don't have the list with me handy. Um, I'd highly encourage people to, to check in on our meetings when we do this, and we do post when we discuss it. Um, I don't know. Do Matt, do you ever call the number offhand about? A number of homes that are on service. Mm -hmm. I say 300 or something. Yeah. And you have that system or something. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to give you a number. I can offer that I was on the Cable Advisor Committee when we negotiated the contract. It's an incredibly hard number to find out. Um, Charter knows exactly how many subscribers they have. But matching that up against the population, because not everybody who could get cable gets cable, it's kind of you'd have to do a lot of surveying and door knocking to try and actually figure that number out. Nobody ever did. Um, I think I have a question over here. Yeah. Can you make sure her mic is hot? The Finance Committee looked into this and talked about it quite a bit, and we think it's a very, it's a good idea, and it's much needed. It's just a hard time to be spending money when we don't know how our revenues and everything's going to come. We don't have the state money that we know to balance our budget. We'd like to recommend that we move this article to committee for the selectmen to take up this article in the fall of 2020 at a special town meeting. And in the meantime, find out exactly how many and where and what the total cost will be so we would have a better judgment on the whole thing. I believe I just heard a motion to refer the article to committee. That motion would require a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. So before we have any more discussion about Article 21, we're going to have discussion about the motion to refer this article to committee. Ms. Marshall? Yeah, it's a motion. A, a motion to refer to committee is a motion to take. Jordan, thank you. Uh, we have, uh, before you, there's a bit right behind you. We have Whitney Marshall of Loring Road. It's a comment. Um, I understand that right now financially things seem unstable, but as a teacher that's wondering how I'm going back to school in the fall, having the uncertainty of no internet access at my house is a little bit frightening to me. And so trying to figure out how I'm going to return to school, return to work, meet my students if we're not in face-to-face -face classes without internet access right now, and whether or not we'll be allowed in the building full time is is troubling and concerning to me, and I feel like it needs to be something that we vote on tonight because it is a real pressing issue, issue for many of us in town. 
Any more discussion about the motion to refer to committee? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I just want to point out, if you look in your booklets, I've changed the language, um, which I should have stated before I read that motion, actually. I changed the language of that motion from the booklet. So if, if need be, I would reread it. But I changed the language to state that the to transfer the sons into a new account for the cable access, uh, for the cable, let me get it properly, to upgrade and expansion. Um, the reason for doing that was to try to address um, the Finance Committee's concerns. If we dedicate it strictly to the, to the um, expansion, then that's where it has to go. If we put it into an account for that and we need money in the fall, we could retrieve that money at a meeting in the fall from that account and still use it towards other things and get back to it in the future. I still think it's very important to start that fund and have money available so we can have our discussions that will be taken seriously um, by the cable company and, and when we look for grants. Often grants require matching funds and we need to have something available. We have a question behind you, essentially. Behind you? Dennis Fleming of West Street. Do we still have an active cable committee? I can answer that question since I'm the chair of it. Um, there is a cable advisory committee. The purpose of that committee is to negotiate the new contract in 2024 and to help escalate support and service issues when to the government affairs representatives of charter when people can't get um, a good answer about cable. Um, but the committee doesn't have any role to serve in this discussion. It's a very narrow charter. Who else is on this committee? Uh, President uh, Scott Ennis is the other member of the committee. Just two people. There was, there were three back when we negotiated the contract. Since we never need to meet, nobody's bothered to replace the person who left. We have Carrie Oren of Broad Street. She has a comment. Um, with the possibility of the kids um, returning to online classes in August, I think if we table this until the fall, it's going to be too little too late. Do we have another comment? Do we have another comment over here? Did you want to say something? I just wanted to clarify that the Board of Selectmen has started bringing this to the Finance Committee's attention in 2017. And that led to us getting pricing in 2018, and at that point, we were asked to wait. We are coming back now with that same pricing, and we're being asked to wait to get updated pricing. There's a certain point where the town needs to make some level of commitment in order to get partners to work with you to move forward. Otherwise, it's just a lot of hot air, and nobody's going to commit on their side if we won't commit on ours. So right now, this is the commitment the town's making, which allows us to get the cable company, the state grant agencies, and various other places to stand with us to complete the program. Um, no, the program is not I dotted T's cross. Yeah, you can't get Claire. Just to let you know. The Finance Committee did not see any of this paperwork. We saw it about 15 minutes before a meeting. And I knew they were looking into things, but we were never formally shown. The total cost of doing the town, they were estimating 700 to 800,000. So this 100,000 isn't going to get you internet for September. It, it won't. 
at all. It is a drop in the bucket to show good faith that we are looking into it, but we've asked for more information to see exactly what it will do and how much is it going to cost so that maybe each year we can add to it. Or if we get more, we can do that. There may be grants. There are a lot of things out there that are possible that we need to look into first. The person right next to Sedgwick. Richard Denardi, Loring Road. I would just like to say that we got to stop kicking the can down the road. I'm turning the microphone back on now. Like I said, we've got to stop kicking the can down the road with this. Uh, we just need to get it started. I don't mind paying my taxes for the school, for police, firefighters, none of which I've used, but I would like the town maybe to get us cable so that we could actually have access. Uh, in this day and age, that's what we need. We have three teachers alone living on Loring Road. You want your children taught, and you want them taught correctly, give us the tools. We have a question in the back. We have Alicia Musgraves, uh, Williamsville Road. This is a question for the Finance Committee. Um, so I guess my question to the Finance Committee is, would they find it more favorable if they utilize the technique that um, the selectmen recommended, which is putting it into a new account, which then if down the line, we would be able to borrow and transfer from that. Claire? Uh, yes. It going into a separate account, it's starting it. But I don't want people to get the impression that they're going to have it for this school year, because that is not possible. It can eventually come. There's a lot of research to do on it. There may be grants out there and things that we can get so we could get it quicker. But that's, I'm all for it, but it's just the timing. And if we get more information as to what we can do. Mr. Fleming? I concur with the people that live on Loring Road. This, enough time has gone by. This needs to be moved forward, get it done. These teachers need to educate, utilize internet, and the, and the families that have the children that need to uh, be online, it isn't fair for them to fall behind because they don't have internet access. So I'm asking that we move forward with this in a favorable manner. Thank you. I'm going to go to the, to the question now um, that's on the table, which is, should we refer this to committee or should we continue to debate? So let me explain what will happen. If we vote to move to committee, it's over, right? It's a replacing motion. If you vote no, then the original motion is still on the floor and you can decide up or down whether it's a good idea, okay? So the only thing I want you to vote on right now is do you want to move this to committee or do you want to continue debate? So all those in, in favor of the Finance Committee's motion to move this to committee, please raise your cards. You can lower your cards. All those in favor of continuing debate on the original motion, please raise your cards. 
Thank you. The motion to move to committee fails. We're now discussing the original motion. Is there any more discussion regarding Article 21? Here. I think Max has got you. Arthur Raish, Dana Road. Can you hear me? Uh, it seems to me that we're not thinking in terms of where these people that don't have this service now can go in town to get that service on a temporary basis. Whether we move it forward or we don't move it forward, it doesn't sound like we can do it in time. We have an excellent facility in this town. It's called a library. They have all kinds of computer facilities in there. Kids can use it to do their online schoolwork. Their teachers could go there and use those facilities. It's not open every day of the week. The library could be open more often. Why can't we use that or other facilities in the same way and continue this process to get them what they need? Mr. St. Germain. The question is, what would be the process for spending the money? If it's just a drop in the bucket, would you have to come back to get more money? I believe that's already been answered by the selectmen, that they plan to use this money as a negotiating tool to try and leverage it into more money through grants or through negotiations with charter. Is that a fair characterization? Yes. Have a follow-up? So when could it be spent? Could. Under the Warren article, it could be spent any time during the fiscal year. But it wouldn't necessarily have to be spent at all. OK. We have one more. Robin Donati, Loring Road. Public spaces are great as an access tool, but it doesn't help when there's an emergency stay-at-home lockdown. I can't use the public library for the work that I do because everything I do is HIPAA-protected information, so public spaces won't work. Okay. Okay, we're going to take Mr. Lipson's question, and then we're going to be done. I'm not much of a parliamentarian, and everybody knows this. Um, is, is there any way we can make a motion and direct the selectmen to focus on the CARES Act, this, this money from corona, uh, coronavirus that we're having now, any of the new money, and expedite it because the selectmen have lots in their plate. And even though we may agree for $100,000, there's no guarantee that the selectmen are going to be focusing on something so important to teach our children. I don't have children, but still, in order to teach the people who are following us. So I'm, like, I'm looking to make a motion to direct the selectmen to focus on this project. And maybe there's a way we can, maybe there's a way we can get it done so that we can begin even if we have to have these vehicles from the cable company on every road, just to facilitate the use for the folks who live on that road. So you have to help me with this motion process. Yeah, you can't make a motion like that right now. You could make a motion to amend. However, that amendment sounds slightly outside the bounds of what this is, because this is a motion to put money into an account. I, I also think that the selectmen are the ones pushing this forward right now. They're the reason that this is on the warrant, and they're the ones making this case. So if you want to make an emotion, a motion to amend, that's your right. Um, I, I would caution you, it seems unnecessary. 
Okay. Mr. Moderator, we did have one person in the back over there that's been waiting for quite a while for a question. Oh, I didn't so that's see why, that. That's why the runner's been back there in the corner the whole time. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Can you, I don't know, just come forward. Just come up away from the speaker. It's going to be up beyond the speaker. Thank you. We have Tyler Gauda of Loring Road. Comment. Yeah, I just, I moved here uh, to Barrie about a month ago. Uh, we moved on to Loring Road. And we, when we moved in, actually, we were promised uh, by the realtors that there was, <laughs> that there was cable on the street. Um, so obviously, we actually could have paid $20,000 less, um, I guess, for our house. Uh, but the thing is, I, I know it's been you know, said before, but I just want to reiterate, you know, you don't realize how much you rely on internet on a daily basis in your life nowadays, especially in the times that we're living in right now. Um, we do, there is alternatives, I guess, to cable, but they're absolute, it, you better have not have cable, you know, with the satellite internet we have right now, they're just not good at all. Um, I work from home, my mother works from home. She can barely do video meetings. My brother's gonna be starting college. Uh, he's gonna have to do some online classes. And you know, with all three of those, all three of us doing that in one day, it's just not going to work. Um, which is why I just want you all to realize. I mean, you just if you really think about it, internet is, is you is a huge part of your life, especially nowadays uh, with everything that's coming out. So I just uh, I think moving forward with this and actually just getting that money into an account so we can at least start the process instead of you know treading water like I guess I've heard that has been going on for the last couple of years. Um, so I think we just we need to move forward with this and, and start the process instead of just kicking it to the wayside and waiting another six months. So thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that's enough discussion. We're going to move to the vote. The motion before you is to move $100,000 from FY19 free cash into a new account to help expand and improve cable. And I just want to indicate again, because I didn't announce it beforehand, that it is a change to how the motion was written in your book. Could you read me the motion again? That you made just so everyone's right. clear what we're voting on. Right. The motion that I made was, uh, I move the town vote to transfer from FY19 free cash the sum of $100,000 to a new account for cable upgrade and expansion in the town of Barrie. So the two new accounts are part we added to try to appease the finance committee for concern in the fall. Okay. All right. Any other questions about that procedurally? Okay. So we're now voting. A vote yes would move $100,000 into a new account. A vote no would not do that. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your cards. You can lower your cards. All those opposed to the motion, raise your cards. The motion carries. Now we're going to go back to Article 3. That's on page 30 of the book. And Article 3, Mr. Moderator, was a funding article for the FY20 budget. Um, we do not need that article. So, so we're going to move table to Article 3. You move to pass over Article yes, 3? pass over Article 3. We do not need. Do we have a second? The budget is now. We have a motion and a second to pass over Article 3 as it is unnecessary. All those in favor? You can lower your cards. All those opposed? And, I, and I'd just like to comment on the balance of free cash um, yes. is being, as you may notice, it's not moving to stabilization here. It's staying as free cash. It'll be used in the general fund up until we, um, I, if I get this correct, till we recertify our tax valuations. And then it would, whatever's left, would go back to become free cash next year. 
Um, that just leaves us with the uncertainty. That extra 100 and some odd, I think about 160,000 available if we do have um, shortfalls in revenues. And we've already anticipated in the budget, we've been conservative. Um, we've planned on some shortfalls and, and, and planned on uh, lesser money coming in than we might normally do so. Uh, so it's just a precautionary measure. This article we removed had nothing to do with that. That was if we didn't fund the budget this year, we might need to take more to do so. Okay. We have dealt with everything on our warrant. Yes? Sure. Yeah, I recognize you. We have $117,986.37. Our accountant is calculating that we're about 110000 short to balance our budget. So that will mean that we really won't have much cash. Could the accountant speak? Um, at this point, there is no... Um, just to let the people know. Well, no. no. So there's no motion on the table that would be out of order. What I can tell you is that everyone anticipates that we're going to be coming to a special town meeting sometime in the fall. Uh, there were a lot of unknowns in this budget. If you go through the booklet that Heather prepared, you're going to find a lot of interesting information in there. Um, we, di we don't have a lot of information from the state. We don't really understand what school is going to cost next year. So we're expecting to have another special town meeting, and we're going to be addressing all of those kinds of issues at that town meeting. Um, I don't know if it will be inside or outside, honestly. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I thank you all for your patience. I think this went OK. Um, exiting, exiting safely and maintaining social distance continues to be important. So after we dissolve the meeting, I would ask that you exit out the back, and I want the last row to leave first, and then the row in front of them, and then a row of, like we're doing a buffet at a wedding, okay? So we'll just do it. I'm gonna ask my tellers, we're not quite done yet, I'm gonna ask my tellers to tell people when it's time for their row to clear. Can you guys head back to the back there? I would entertain, yeah? Um, I would entertain a motion to dissolve the annual town meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? All those in favor? All those opposed? The meeting is dissolved.